All right, my friend, it's Doug. In this lesson, let's create our UI collection view controller. This is going to be awesome because you are going to use all the items, all the things that we have been creating in this course so far. We create the data model, we design the cells, the collection view inside our storyboard, and then we create a subclass of the collection view cell, which is this guy. And then this one, let's create a subclass of UI collection view controller. And then we use all of those things displaying these beautiful images. Of course, it will not be, be beautiful at first, but then we'll configure that thing to this grid of photos. So I see you in the demo. Let's move ahead into the demo with me. All right, folks, open up your Xcode and let's get back to work. We have in this lesson, we create the photos collection view controller photos collection view controller let's hand over our controller and then right click new file let's use a script file and then let's have this guy as photos collection view controller put it right here and we create the class let's use the standard editor import ui kit because we need ui kit all right, let's make some space. Here we go. Where is the class? Class photos collection view controller. And can you guess what is the type of this? Yeah, it is subclassing UI collection view controller like this. Now, I hope that by now you notice some of the naming convention, just like tail view. So we have the UI collection view is the view. You have the UI collection view controller is the controller that you have to subclass. And you have the UI collection view cell is each of the cell, right? And then you have, later on, you have something called UI collection view layout, which is the layout object. And this, its subclass is UI collection view flow layout you see this okay so this layout is going to dominate the layout of this collection view so i should rather move this thing up above here like this okay and move this guy over here okay cool so now let's have our photos collection view controller the first thing we will have to talk about is what is our data always always app is all about displaying data on on um what's that on the screen or getting the data from the users allow users to create data so here was our data we have a bunch of photo categories so var photo categories is photo libraries dot fetch photos and it returned for us an array of photo category remember in here and you know what let's make sure that we put it as an array of photo category like this so that later on we don't forget okay awesome now let's head over our view did load super done view did load like this and then i'm going to configure our cells and those kind of things okay here we are going to let's have a to do here and then we'll do it that later so here we have to change the layout of the collection view of the collection view we'll talk about this now the first step after this photos collection uh, categories the next step is we have to implement our collection view data source so let's have the collection view data source let's have another mark here called ui collection view data source and then let's have another mark over here for our view controller live live uh was live cycles methods right and then the collection view data source what are the methods number one the number of sections in the collection view so here, I want to display each of the photo category to be one section. The family is one section. The travel is one section. The nature is one section. So we return the photo categories. Categories.count. 
to be the number of sections. Next thing, let's have the number of items in the section, meaning that each of this cell, each of this cell is going to be an item. It's called an item, not a row, because like a row or a cell is more of a table view. So the item here is going to be like this. So how many items are there? Yeah, we're going to access return photo category. Photo categories like that. And then we get the section. So subscript section like this. And then we get the dot image names and we count that. How many image names are there in this specific section? Then that is the number of items in the section. The final method is our yeah, cell for item at index path. We have to return a drum roll UI collection view cell. <laughs> so that is why I tell you over here, right? You have a controller view and cell. Okay, now here, guess what? We also call something like collection view dot DQ reusable cell with identifier. That is just like table view. Now, before we do that, we have to remember that we change the identifier for this cell. So let's head over the photo cells in our uh, storyboard. Copy paste the photo cells over here, identifier, change that into photo cells. Photo cell. And then go into your photos collection view controller and then i'm going to have a structure over here called struct storyboard to store some of the static information from the storyboard for example we have the static let photo cell photo cell to be our photo cells like this okay later on we are going to store some of the other information so now Let's head over the cell for item and index path. And anyway, this is the photo cells. Cool. Okay. Now inside the collection view cell here, let's have let the cell to be our collection view. So let cell to be the collection view. Gosh, <laughs> some reason I cannot spell that right. Let cell to be collection view dot the key reusable cell with identifier for this index path. So for index path, and then the with reuse identifier here, the identifier is storyboard dot, yeah, photo cells. And then the index path is index path. Now what do we have to do next? All right, we have to return the cell. But before we return the cell, we want to configure that cell. So the cell here, because we know that in our storyboard, we change the custom class of this cell to be a photo cell. Remember that in the custom class, not the image, but the photo cell, to be a photo cell. That's why we can cast this down, this cell down, as a photo cell. And then because we have the photo cell, we can set the cell the image name to be some image names over here, right? How can we get this image name? How can we get this image name? From our data source. So we can get let photo category to be a photo categories subscript index path dot section. That will give us the section. And then we can get the let image names to be the photo category Read dot image names so that we have an array of image names. Now all we have to do is get that image name at this index path, and then guess what? Just like tail view, it has the index path dot row. Now we have the index path dot item. I know that's kind of weird, but here we have the item. Actually, you, when you do dot row, it still works for some reason. But here we let's just use the standard naming convention. So image name equals image names subscript index path dot item. Like this. And we can assign this image name to this image name. You see this coming? Okay. That's simple, isn't it? That's pretty simple. We have three methods and an array of things. That's it. And we are good to go.
Now let's set our custom class for this guy. I don't think we already set that. So set the custom class into Photos Collection View Controller and run the app to see how it looks like. Here's how it looks like. Drum roll, please. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> so we have uh, like just a normal grid of things like these. It's not a grid, of course. <laughs> but we have all the photos displayed. How cool is that? Now our job is that we have to configure that layout object. Remember, we have the layout object over here of the collection view. The layout object in the collection view here, and then we have the collection view flow layout. This object we have, we're going to make that a grid of photos. How can we do that? Let's do that in code. So, photos collection view controller like this, and then head over your storyboard. I'm going to add some more properties here. Number one, let's have a static. Let's call it left in right. Paddings to be a CG float of 2.0. Let's use that painting. So you see this? The painting of the left and right of each of the cell, you see that is very tiny, only two point. Next thing. Let's have static let number of items per row is a CG float. Let's make that three items per row because we have one, two, three. Cool? Just that simple. Now we have a to do here in our view that load. So in the view that load, let's get that, let the collection view width to be our, let's calculate that collection view width. How can we do that? You get the width of the whole collection view using um, collection view, which is our root view, right? Because we are subclassing your collection view controller. It has the root view is our collection view. You see this? Okay, so collection view. Let's do dot frame dot width. And then we do let item width to be the collection view. Collection, collection view width. We have to ungrab that thing because this is optional chaining here. Collection view width, and then we minus our left and right painting. You see this? We have to minus the left and right painting. Minus, oh, you know what? This is paintings because I really believe that this is only one point. Yeah, really small. That's why we have two paintings here, right? We have three rows, so the left and right painting will be one times two equals to two. So here we minus the storyboard dot left in right paintings and then we divide it by the storyboard dot number of items per row now the item width here all we do is we have the width of the whole collection view we minus the painting between these guy and then we divide it by three the number of items per row okay now this calculation will stay the same how many uh, whatever the many rows um, that you want to have for your collection view. So yeah, I want to change this into like five rows. You can do that. Ten rows, you can do that. Just change it over there. And this calculation still works. That's why we have those things in a shroud like this. Cool? Okay. Now, in order to change the size of our layout item size, we have to change let layout. We, we have to get that layout object. So let layout to be our collection view layout. It is an object in collection view. So I hope that you still recall in your collection view controller, you have a collection view, and then the collection view has a bunch of cells. And then outside of that, the collection view controller also has the collection view layout. It is that collection view layout here. And then we cast it down as a UI collection view flow layout. Flow layout. Cool. And then let's change the layout to the item size into CG size with a width of item width. 
and the height of item height like this oops item height to where I'm sorry item width and item width because we want to make that a square and we don't have to hide them height here cool so now let's run the app and see how it looks like hopefully it's started to take shape here we go this is not our app by the way this is the complete project so uh all right so we have two rows like this it's starting to take shape in one way or another whatever that is so now what is the problem here what's the problem here yeah the problem here is that there's some space between these two guys that is like too big it's too big that's why that's too big that's why it, it's kind of like is not enough space so it's pushed out like that so here what we can do is go over this mean the storyboard goes over here and then select your collection view goes to the size inspector like this and you see this the minimum spacing for the cells here the minimum spacings is the spacing between each of the cells like that so here i want to have it one for the lines the lines here is the spacing between each of the line like this you see it's really big here because it is 10 by default right now so let's change that into one okay so let's run the app and see how it looks like boom see that it's awesome pretty cool huh oh you know what this is like quite uh, quite small so I think that I'm going to change this into two and for lines is two so let's run the app and see what it looks like again the minimum spacing the mean spacing between the cells is the vertical space oh by the way this is a collection view right here you see this this is the collection view right here and then yeah this is the collection view so the mean spacing is between two cells so oh okay so i think this is too big let me check against our complete app yeah it's yeah it's a one okay sorry guys the morning my friend <laughs> okay let's run it once again here we go all right so we have a beautiful collection view of photos all right, my friends, so that is your collection view of the Photos. We are not done yet because there's a lot of more things we need to talk about collection view. Things like multiple sections, things like add new cells, add new items into your collection view, deleting items, uh, segueing from the master screen to the detail screen, all of the stuff we talk about in the next upcoming lessons. But before we do that, I would love to address one question of yours and uh, maybe I can give you an opportunity to work with me even more and further your education. That is, people ask, you want to build things like Facebook or things like Instagram and those real world startup apps, how do you do that? I have a program for you that hundreds of people have been going through that is what we call socialize your apps this is the program where i share with you how to build apps like instagram literally how to build apps like facebook messenger or nike e-commerce store and a lot more so if you would love to check out the program sign up below click the link right below this page there will be all the information all the details about the program for you what apps are we going to build what are the bonuses that you're going to get so please do it today because these bonuses are going to expire this week so please do it now i see you in the next lesson i see you in socialize your apps until then go out there every single day of your life learn new things craft your ideas and contribute to the world, check out Socialize Your Apps. I think you really, really enjoyed it.